This is Wretched Radio with Todd Friel. Just another encouragement to pray. This is Wretched Radio. Thank you very much for your prayers for Cindy Marty, still in Ukraine, working on forming more and more tomorrow clubs. She is still struggling with health issues, Parkinson's disease, but she is doing better. So keep praying for her. That is, a, it's an excellent ministry. I was just listening to uh, Steve Lawson's sermon from the G3 conference. It was excellent. There's a shocker. It was Steve Lawson. And he was talking about missions and what preachers should preach like, how they should stand up, command attention, declare, not be all mealy mouthed and, well, you know, hey, I don't want to like impose on your values or anything, but. No, you declare it authoritatively. That's what a preacher does. And he was talking about it in the context of missions, which was the th- the theme for the G3 conference. Next year, worship. This year, it was on missions. And he said, if you are analyzing ministries, missions ministries, make sure that they are preaching the gospel. Nothing wrong with digging a well. Those are nice, kind things to do, but that isn't missions rightly defined. Those can be acts of charity, but missions is going and proclaiming the gospel in an effort to strengthen the local church. That's exactly what Tomorrow Clubs does, exactly what they do. It, is a, it, it really is a great ministry. The more people who support that ministry every month, the more clubs they open, the more kids that get saved, the more churches in Eastern Europe get strengthened under Eastern Orthodox terror reign. I'm telling you, they are heavy-handed, a fruit of a false system. You can support your own Tomorrow Club at tomorrowclubs.org slash wretched, tomorrowclubs.org slash wretched. And thank you for your prayers. Keep praying for Cindy. It means a lot to her. Just listen to Phil Johnson and I on Too Wretched for Radio. We already recorded this we listened to an Eastern Orthodox priest explain to this guy, I think he would call himself an evangelical, his YouTube thing is to talk to other Christian expressions to hear what they think. And basically, in trying to explain what the Eastern Orthodox Church believes about the gospel and salvation, how one is saved, it was two minutes of utter confusion. And that is so typical And there are so many young people who are being drawn to it because they think that's my connection back to the early church. For some reason, that seems to be a big deal to people. I can tell you, if you are in Christ, you are in connection with the early church. Through the church, not a denomination or a sect or a building or a location, but through believers, that invisible universal church that has existed throughout the ages. That's your connection. A lot of people know I need to be in the denomination. That really is the denomination. Why that thinking? I guess a sense of belonging, perhaps. Maybe it's comforting to them. It feels more secure than, wait, so like there there could be people in a lot of denominations that build the, make up the church and and that's, that's my connection that seems flimsy compared to, no, we can trace this denomination back. Let's say you can. So what? So what? Let's, uh, okay, tell you what. We will give the Roman Catholics and we will give the Eastern Orthodox their, their, we'll just say, we grant you. You are connected all the way back in some way, shape, or form to the first century church. And how does that prove that they're correct? Hmm? And the answer is it doesn't. And there, you could, you could. There's all kinds of people who do this. I'll bet it would not be hard to Google sects or cults that claim that they go all the way back to the first century. And it, it doesn't, it doesn't prove or mean anything. Furthermore, we need to remember church history that the early church, the first five centuries mostly agreement with them. They were working through a lot of stuff. These were brilliant people, but we've got cumulative knowledge. They were working through soteriology, Trinitarian theology, Christology, getting things figured out. And there was agreement. When do we see the church? And if you want to call it the Roman church, ah, okay, fine. Call it that if you must. But after like the 500s, it started to veer 
increasingly, by the time you get to the Reformation, it was total wonkyville. Outside of Orthodox, completely licentious behavior at the highest levels. So it doesn't mean anything that you're connected or not connected. The question is, what is true? And the answer is found in the Bible. Phil and I, in that Too Wretched for Radio segment, we also listen to Catholic Answers. It's a radio program. And they were talking about we Protestants who believe in grace alone. And the guy actually said something like, you know what? Hold on a second. I'll give you a tease on this. I'll tell you exactly what the fellow said. And you're just going to go, wait, what? You've got to be kidding me. I find that Protestantism that you just spoke of, like the non-denominational Protestantism, itself has absolutely no foundation in sacred scripture. The Spit take? What? Are you kidding me? That was the Reformers' lament with the Roman Catholic Church. You don't adhere to sola scriptura. You're the ones who are into tradition, the magisterium, the three-legged stool. We stand on Scripture alone. You can catch Too Wretched for Radio somewhere on the Internet. I don't exactly know where because... I don't know where because I'm a complete knucklehead with those. Wretched.org. Go to wretched.org. That's what it is in the podcast feed. That was just a test for Joey's sake. Idea at wretched.org. Idea at wretched.org. Todd, I just heard you answer that man who called and asked about the movie The Moses Controversy. It's a good movie, writes Gail. Ken Ham sometimes uses video clips from patterns of evidence in their Answers Bible curriculum. Our church is currently using the curriculum. It is super patternsofevidence.com. That from Gail and Ken Ham. That's another ministry. Be praying for Ken and the gang. They take a shellacking. Josh, do you think you would refuse to take communion with Presbyterians? No. Would you allow one to become a member of your church that is Baptist if they had no solid Presbyterian church and are willing to submit to the elders on issues while disagreeing? Yes. Do you think it matters whether or not we have leavened or unleavened bread during communion? No. That was as pithy as I can be. Of course, I would. I personally, I don't. I don't believe in a hey anybody just come to the table. I think it should be a close. I don't think it should be closed. In other words, just the people in my sect, if you will, are qualified to take communion. So I would have no problems with believers who are Presbyterians. Look, just because they're wrong on the whole pedo baptism thing and covenantalism and maybe church polity doesn't mean can't have fellowship with them and take communion. Now, the issue of becoming a member of a church, let's say you're in a town, you're a Presbyterian, you can't find a good Presbyterian church, but there's a good Bible-teaching Baptist church. I think you should go there and even become a member, but you can't try to make everybody a Presbyterian. And conversely, you're a Baptist, no good churches, there's a good Presbyterian church, so you go there. Don't, Don't make it a point to be causing controversy, division, and strife. So I do think you need to submit to that if that's your option. I do believe, could be wrong about this, but I believe denominations like divorce, God's concession. Okay, (sighs) you stiff-necked people can't seem to get along on much. Fine, Presbyterians, Baptists, Lutheran, even, even some Methodists. Okay, fine, because we have a hard time getting along. We can get along, but if you are becoming a member of a different denomination, I think that you need to be able to zip it in order to be a good member. And as far as the leaven and unleavened bread, uh, I think it's better to try to follow the pattern that we see set before us. It was certainly unleavened bread. There is some symbolism, but does the Bible say it must be unleavened bread? No. But that's why I wouldn't make it a law where there is no law, but I do think that it's just wise to follow the pattern as best you can. That's all, but it's 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 not heresy if you do it with... No, for instance, I don't think anybody... Let's just say you're kind of a stickler on the deal and you think it's got to be unleavened bread. You're, you're on the island of Boingo Boingo and you don't have unleavened bread. Would you say don't take communion? Uh, 
I don't I don't think you'd be sinning. By the way, speaking of the island of Boingo Boingo and the oldest jokes on the planet. So this guy has been marooned on Boingo Boingo. Here we go. For about 20 years, ship comes by, rescues him, and notices he's got three huts built. They said, why? You're just one guy. Why do you have three huts? And he said, well, the first one, this is my house. Get ready for a rim shot. The second one, uh, this is my church. Well, what about the third one? Oh, that's my old church. Thank you. <laughs> we can divide, can we, over a lot of silly stuff. There is unity when we have unity in the essentials, but we can most certainly get along and even take communion together when we disagree on the secondary and tertiary issues. This is Wretched Radio.